we've learnt about the sensitivity of money demand to things like your interest rates, um, so we looked at age and, and how sensitive it is to income, we learnt about K, but why were we interested in those things and how does this affect our economy and it, it's important to know because it, affect, it affects how um, successful your monetary policy is going to be. So for instance, we're going to look at a monetary expansion and see how this affects the economy. Say for instance, if you're trying to increase income or output for that economy. This is the diagram that the textbook presents you with. Um, and it looks at the transmission mechanism, how we get to the new equilibrium. And I think it's particularly difficult to try and understand this just with that diagram. So I'm going to unravel this. I'm going to look at the money market and then at the goods market. And I think this will help you to understand this more clearly. So we start out with equilibrium, where your downward sloping IS intersects your LM that we've learned how to derive. And equilibrium is an interest rate of I0 and Y0 to start off with. So say, for instance, there's an expansionary monetary policy. So as explained in your lectures, um, the, the Reserve Bank, for instance, can buy bonds. Buy bonds and in the process put um, money in circulation. So increase the money supply. So your LM curve is going to shift to the right. And you're going to get a new equilibrium, which is called E dash in your, in your diagram that you have. But we don't just jump from one equilibrium to another. We don't just go there overnight. There's a process by which this change in the money supply filters through and affects the economy. So let's understand what happens. So we start at E with this interest rate of I0. And at a given level of income, let's have a look what's going on in the money market. We know that equilibrium in the money market is where your money demand curve intersects your money supply curve. So what happens when you get your equilibrium interest rate determined there? So what happens when the money supply increases? This whole line is going to shift to the right. So we're going to get a new, new increased money supply. So it's going to shift to the right. This, let's look at what happens at the initial interest rate. You now have an increased money supply. Here's your money supply. But this is the quantity of money demanded. So you're going to have an excess supply of money, surplus to people's requirements. So quantity supplied here, quantity demanded there at this initial, equilibri initial equilibrium interest rate. Let's call that E, the equilibrium. So this is going to cause a uh, portfolio disequilibrium. There's too much money um, relative to what people desire. So they're going to start to want more bonds and in the process they'll drive the price of bonds up and we know um, from our lecture that there's an inverse relationship between the price of the bond and its yield so this causes interest rates to fall as interest rates start to fall we move along the demand curve for money so a lower interest rate induces people to be prepared to hold more liquidity, more cash, because there's a lower opportunity cost of doing so. So we move along the money demand curve until we get to a new equilibrium, we'll call that E1, where once again your money market is in equilibrium, money demand equals the new increased money supply. Okay, so in the process we see that interest rates have fallen. But we can't just leave it there because this is the real world and this is going to knock on and have another effect. And this is exactly what, what your reserve bank is intending, that this increase in the money supply affects your goods market in turn. So when the interest rate falls, investment we know is going to rise, planned investment. And that has the effect, as we've learned previously, of shifting our whole aggregate demand curve up. And our intercept will increase and we're going to get a new equilibrium let's just put it here new equilibrium where the ad curve intersects our 45 degree line so what has happened in the process income has risen and there's just one final step in this process 
but an increase in income in turn has a knock-on effect back in the money market. So and what do we know? What have we learned about an increase in income? We hold income constant along a given money demand curve. So, so far, we've moved, in this an original diagram, we've moved from E to E1. We found that when the money supply increases, the LM shifts to the right here, increase in, in, in the supply of money, excess supply um, relative to what people want, so they desire more bonds, the price goes up, the interest rate falls. And that was all holding income constant when we moved along a given money demand curve. But because the fall in interest rate that, that occurs results in this increase in investment and aggregate demand, we see that income rises. And as income rises, this is where we go back to our money market, we see that that shifts our money, call it L1, it shifts our money demand curve to the right. And we get a new equilibrium where once again this is going to cause your interest rate here in this process of readjustment it will cause your interest rate to rise money demand increases brings about an, an increase in the interest rate as we saw previously so we're moving now from e1 to e dash as income rises the interest rate rises until we get to our final equilibrium e dash so to recap to understand this process of moving from our initial equilibrium to our final, we need to understand the transmission mechanism. We first move at a given level of income, we move from E to E1, because in a money market, portfolio disequilibrium causes interest rates to fall. And then when the interest rate falls, investment rises, income rises, and as income rises, Money demand shifts to the right, interest rate goes up, we move from here, from E1 to E dash, and that is how we get to our final position. And why do we want to know about this transmission mechanism and how the increase in money supply affects the economy? Is because if part of this process breaks down, for instance, if people are very sensitive to the interest rate, what effects is this going, going to have on the working of monetary policy.